Hello and welcome to Practically. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm John and I'll introduce you to the Clojure CLI tools, which is a new way of running and working with the Clojure projects. In this video, I'll uh, cover how to install Clojure on the command line, so we have uh, Clojure readily available everywhere. And then I'll show you how to run a single expression and call a main function from an existing Clojure project. And then we'll look at uh, which is the more common approach to developing enclosure, and that's how to run a REPL, uh, which is a live closure environment in which you can immediately evaluate your code. So you're getting that instant feedback as soon as you're writing your code. That helps you understand what you're doing and helps you test your uh, assumptions as you're building your code. To start the installation, we'll visit the Clojure org uh, website uh, and uh, view their getting started page. Uh, this page includes all the uh, install instructions for the relevant operating systems. So you'll choose uh, Mac, uh, Linux, or on Windows as well. I have already installed Clojure on my Ubuntu Linux operating system, uh, which involved downloading the script. Uh, and, and making it executable and and then running the script. So these instructions here, uh, and it was very straightforward. And so next we can have a look at uh, what's actually been installed. So if I switch to my terminal window, and then we can uh, see that we can type in closure into the command line, and it will run closure and. The first time it runs, it uh, will download uh, the Clojure library if you've never run it before. And you can see here it's run a Clojure environment for us and it's using Clojure version 1.10.1. And we can just close uh, out of that uh, with Control D. So you can run a, a Clojure REPL. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Let's have a look at actually what's been installed. So we can use Clojure on the as an executable uh, script, it's been included on the path, so we can use it anywhere. Uh, there's also a CLJ script, which we'll have a quick look at as well. Uh, the closure command takes options, and we can use describe to see what the environment information is. We do closure, and then S for script, and describe. Uh, so this shows us, uh, again, it shows us the version of closure that we're running. So we've got version 1.10.1, uh, and also the specific uh, install version that we've used. Uh, so this pulls up from the actual script that we've just used to install uh, Clojure. So there's information here that tells us where all our configuration files are. And so there's three places. So there's the uh, installation location, uh, which is just really defining where uh, which version of Clojure we're using. So Clojure is a library that's downloaded. So this uh, installation configuration just defines uh, which version, which library to download. Then we have uh, our uh, configuration file in uh, our account. So this is my particular login account to uh, my operating system. And so I can put in uh, configuration here that will be relevant to all the projects I'm working on. So this will be additional tools and libraries I want to use. And there's also Depths Eden, which is because I'm in a project, I'm in a project here. Uh, if I do uh, ls, you can see there's a local project that I'm in. So it's picking up the fact that there's a configuration file called Depths Eden in this project. So it's also adding that to the uh, configuration path. Uh, there's also the install directory, which so you can go and have a look at see exactly what's been installed, what the files are. And if we want a full listing of uh, all the options with Clojure, we can do uh, Clojure dash dash help. So we can see everything that the command line will do, all the options we can pass, and uh, we can also get uh, some links to further, uh, further reading about the command line as well. Uh, so now we've got Clojure installed, let's have a look at how we can run uh, Clojure code. And so the easiest, simplest way to do is just to pass some closure code in uh, as an argument. And so here we're going to use the E option, the minus E option, to say evaluate uh, the next thing that's our closure code. So we do something very simple, which is just adding up one, two, three, four, five. And we're just putting our expression in uh, double quotes as a string. 
and then closure will go away and just evaluate that and it brings back a result. Uh, if it does, if the result is nil, then it won't print anything out. Uh, so that's a really easy way to evaluate just a piece of code. So inside a very simple project, and so I can run this project by using the closure command with the minus M option. And we just need to specify the, the main namespace. So where a, a dash main or a main function actually resides. And so for this project, it's actually in simple.core. So if you run that, then we get the result of calling the main function uh, from uh, the simple.core. And if we have a look at that, uh, which is in the source, uh, simple. So you can see all it's doing is just calling uh, this main function here. Uh, we can pass it arguments, uh, but it's simply just returning the result of this function, which is uh, to print line out. So print to the standard out, uh, hello world, and any of the arguments that we've uh, also added to our string as well. Uh, and we call it, so we call it again with an argument this time, and it prints out with that result. Uh, so it's very easy to just run a closure program uh, just using the closure command. This is your live closure environment where you can run code and as you write it you'll get immediate feedback. There's no external compilation of code, it all happens as soon as you're uh, evaluating the expression. And so typing closure into the command line as we've seen gives us a closure REPL. Um, however if we use the uh, CLJ command uh, actually gives us a slightly better experience because it uses something called the RL wrap uh, command, uh, which just needs to be installed on your operating system. Uh, and this provides uh, things like uh, line editing and history, uh, and so sort of like the, the basics for an interactive uh, program such as the REPL. So we can enter closure expressions in here again. Uh, so our classically simple uh, adding numbers together. And as we're completing the parentheses, it's showing us that when we type a close bracket, it's matching it to the, the open bracket. So we get some guidance there. And we just press enter and we get our results. And so uh, this is going away, compiling the code, running it and giving them the result all in one. So we can just try any legal closure expression in there. And obviously the ones that don't work will give us errors. But we can also use the, uh, the upper arrow to go back through the history. I don't actually have much for history here. But I can do more functions in here. Let's do map ink over a collection. Close the vector, close the list, and press enter. And so now I can I can scroll back through uh, the history of my REPL as well. Uh, an even better experience uh, is if we add the REBEL read line, which provides uh, function signature information, so we know how to use a function call. Uh, edit the project page on GitHub, and they just give us a command. Copy that, paste that into our terminal. So this is essentially running the closure command, and uh, we're not using the CLJ uh, Rebel read line provides uh, its own uh, read line uh, wrapper, so we don't we shouldn't really run both. And we're adding a dependency that pulls in the Rebel read line library, and we also set the the main uh, namespace uh, here we're setting this uh, m rebel read line main so it's going to call the function the main function out of that to run our REPL and the first time you run this there will be a few dependencies that it will need to pull down so you will need to have a, an internet connection once you've run this uh, it will cache all of these uh, libraries into your maven repository which is just a, a local uh, directory on your file space so once the dependencies are finished downloading, then you can use uh, Rebel Readline just as normal REPL. So we can enter in some expressions. and But this time, we also get some syntax highlighting. And we also get uh, the function signatures as well. So we get uh, a, a clue about how to actually call a particular function and how many arguments it will take. And uh, so we can go off and do that. Again, it's also uh, letting us know when we've completed the parentheses. So we've got a matching open and close parentheses. I we press enter and we get the results. There's also a collection of REPL and we can see what those are as well. And so the, the nice one I'm going to use now is just quit. Uh, be, there we go. And that just drops us out of the REPL session and everything we've been doing again is, is now closed down. 
So rather than use this really long command line each time, I can use an alias instead. And so there's an alias here called rebel. Uh, and again, it's all it's doing is just including the library and the how to run that library as well. So we'll take a copy of that and then go to my editor. Oh, note the file that's in my home directory, uh, which is closure depths Eden. And this is going to add rebel for all my projects. Uh, and so I don't need to go and add it into each individual project uh, configuration. So now we've got this rebel alias included and we can just now have that running every time we run uh, closure just by specifying the alias. Save that, switch that back to my terminal. And so now I can do, instead of just doing closure and the really long command line, I can do closure and just specify I want to call that alias, which is called rebel and closure like this. And so now we can see we've got the uh, rebel read line working correctly.